guys, it's that time again. So another episode, so welcome. Um, this week I'm talking about something that's very close to my heart and is the reason why I'm even standing here as a coach today and that's binge eating. And the title is, why do I binge eat and what can I do about it? So that is a question I've asked myself so many times over the years. I've been, I have been a binge eater for over 20 years um, and I must have asked myself that question, like I said, thousands of times thinking it was all me and why can't I stop eating and all the rest of it. So depending on how you see binge eating, even if you consider yourself a binge eater or not, um, at least once in your life, if you don't consider yourself a binge eater, you have consumed something in an excess amount in a short amount of time and then possibly looks around yourself at all the chocolate wrappers or the sweet wrappers and thought what the actual how did that happen and um, that's very common for a binge eater but we we know that it's happening and when it's happened we feel guilt shame like disgust in ourselves so the difference between just overeating every now and again um, you don't have the feelings of shame, guilt and self-hate towards yourself that you do get when you're a binge eater. So it's more common than you think. Binge eating is the most um, common eating disorder that there actually is. So that says something about it, that how how common it is. And you, we think that we're on our own when we're sat in a binge and, you know, why did I do that? My life's awful and I can't do anything right you're not on your own, so do speak to people about this, which I will say towards the end, but you're not on your own, so that's first thing to know. And the causes of binge eating then, so what are the main causes of binge eating? So it turns out that binging behaviours, um, whether, like I said, it can be, it can be food, it can be alcohol, it can be drugs, it can be shopping even, um, that can cause binging behaviour, but I'm talking about food today. So psychologists decide or say that binging from any term, whether it's food or alcohol or whatever, is ways of dealing with negative emotions that are not rational or healthy. So like I said, when does just general overindulgence become a real problem and you turn into a binge eater? It's when it affects you mentally, when it affects you socially, when you feel shame um, and self-hate and guilt towards yourself after you've eaten a certain amount of food or even just a certain food. If you've decided you're giving up chocolate and you eat chocolate, there's that shame and guilt and remorse around that. So that's when it starts to turn into a problem. So um, triggers for binge eating then are, so number one is psych psychological and a lot of the time um, binge eating is just a way to just numb feelings and emotions that we don't want to feel because as human beings we don't like to sit in difficult emotions, we like to try and run away from them um, and it actually does give us a feeling of happiness at the time that we're binge eating because otherwise we wouldn't do it. There's a reason why we do that. It's to numb the pain and then once we get um, into the habit of doing that because it does numb the pain for a short amount of time but then you feel awful after it and then you it, that will cause even more of a trigger to binge again because binging is related to um, stress, anxiety and depression. And then when you binge, you're more likely to feel anxious and depressed because of the binge. And then so you binge again. So it's a it's not a fun cycle to be in at all. And it's it's difficult to get out of it, but you can, you really can do it. Um, deprivation is a really, really powerful one that can cause binge eating. So depriving yourself of certain food groups or going on a diet or counting calories that's deprivation. It's even deprivation when you're like, oh, well, I'm trying to be good, so I'm not going to have that. I'll have a salad instead, even when you don't even want the salad, right? And this thing that we all have, like, I need to lose weight because you're not happy with your body, so you consciously eat less or you're dieting, um, that is deprivation, basically. So when, you're, when you've told yourself 
you can't eat a certain food group or you can't have that or you can't have this or when your dietitian or somebody tells you what you can't have you automatically want it even more and that is just the way us human beings are it's like if you put a child in a room and say don't touch that red button of course they're going to touch the red button because that's all they want to do because you told them not to it's just the way us human beings operate so if you're stopping eating your favorite foods in order to change your body and to lose weight then it is so likely you're going to binge on these foods which is exactly what happened to me every time i'd want to lose weight and go on a diet i would give up my favorite food which would be chocolate and desserts and so i would go for so long without them and then when i could eat them again i'd go absolutely crazy because i've just missed them so much and also i told myself i couldn't have them so then of course i wanted them even more and then you build up this this thing around this food where it's like a naughty food you call it or it's called being bad or having a treat well you're not a dog you don't have a treat when you've done something good or or, or not it's just food to be enjoyed so it all a lot it has to do with mindset but when you deprive yourself it's 99% chance you're going to binge because if you look at a I can't say this word pendulum yeah I think that's right pendulum um when you make it move it goes to one side and then the law of cause and effect it has to go the other way because that's just the law of the universe it goes one way and then it goes the other way and that's the same for you if you go to one extreme you have to go to another extreme until you find balance because that's just how it works so when you're sitting there saying what's wrong with me why am i binging out why can't i diet all this self negative self-talk which is what i used to say to myself all the time there's nothing wrong with you it's just the, it's the way it is. If you go one way, then you've got to go another way, okay? So it's not your fault and you can definitely do something about it. But before I go on to the next cause of binging, I do want to add that depriving yourself of certain foods or trying to reduce your calories in order to lose weight is because you want to change your body, your body appearance. So why do you want to change your body appearance so much? And mo the majority of the time, the reasons for that is because society's ideals and society's pressure in order to make us feel like we need to fit into this box, that causes us to want to change our bodies. So it's all BS anyway in the first place. So I won't go into that. I could speak a whole episode on that, but I won't do it today. Another reason um, is chemical. And when I say chemical, what I mean is... When you overindulge or when you binge eat, it feels great. Like I said, it feels good, else you wouldn't do it, okay? And it feels good until regret sets in anyway. So at the time, it feels good. When you're planning a binge, it's just, which is what I used to do all the time, I'd be like so excited to go to the shop and like, I'm going to buy this, 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 this and this and just get really excited about all the sugar and stuff I'm just going to be consuming later. And it's because, And the reason for that is because... When we eat junk food, the chemical a chemical reaction happens in your brain and that chemical is called dopamine and it's a neurotransmitter and when you're eating this junk food, um, dopamine gets released which causes feelings of like euphoria and just happiness and pleasure and satisfaction. So of course you're going to want to keep doing it again because when your brain realizes okay when i eat this type of food i feel amazing at the time then it becomes addictive actually and there's a really good book i recommend oh what was it called um i will put it in the notes because i can't remember the exact name of it but it's um, about being addicted to food or certain food or whatever and i generally was addicted to chocolate 100 percent. so I, so there's ways that you can combat that without going cold turkey which is what the book does recommend i couldn't do that because well i've told myself i couldn't so already i can't right you either can or you can't but i found a way to work for me and i'm not i'm not addicted anymore it's amazing and it's so free oh my god it's really free <laughs> And another reason is social, cultural. So for people who don't have a strong sense of self-confidence, well, you don't even have to have a strong sense of self-confidence because I'm going back to the media and society again. It, there's just messages bombarding us all the time, like 
being told that we're not worth anything unless we're skinny or we're not worth anything unless we don't drink. I actually don't drink. And the amount of people who are shocked, like, there's something wrong with me because I don't drink. Or if you don't own a certain car or you haven't got a life plan or you haven't got a mortgage or whatever, like, you're not... that societies say that message that we get is that we're not worth it unless we do these things. So the pressure to be perfect is definitely a massive advocate for leading for emotional eating and binge eating and that's all due to society so there are a couple of reasons if you have if you have a reason why you binge that I've not mentioned on here please get in touch because I'd love to know because this is my area of expertise and I'd love to do more research about it or hear other people's point of views but the next thing we want to talk about which is really important is how can you stop binge eating what what can we do about it because if you don't want it in your life, some people are, they say anyway, I'm not saying, I can't decide for them, but some people say they're happy just being the way they are and that's eating an excess amount of food, then that's great. If they don't want to change it, that's totally fine. I know for me, it was making me so unhappy. It was just taking over my whole entire life and I was a slave to binge eating and I couldn't stop no matter how desperately I wanted to. I just couldn't stop. So... It's something that's in your life that's not wanted, you can stop it, okay? So no matter how or why you binge, there is loads of treatments available for help. So I like to think about the think model, which is a nice word because I like to think about the think model, and try it. Next time your brain is saying to you, oh my God, I like literally must eat chocolate now or so I'm just going to die, then ask yourself this before you go ahead and do that. So... Is what you're thinking true? Is it true that you must physically need to eat chocolate right now? Is it helpful for you to think this way? Is it inspiring to you to think this way and then, then go ahead and do the action? Is it necessary? So is it necessary to eat chocolate or whatever your binge trigger is? And is it kind? If, if you do this action or if you think this way, is it kind to yourself? So just be, becoming aware of your feelings can stop you or um at least limit limit your binge so i'm not saying never binge because then of course you're going to binge the way i work with my clients is that it's a different it's a different way because let's face it if you want to stop binge eating everything you've done so far to stop you from binge eating hasn't worked and it won't work so you need to look at a different route and that's where i can help you so of course I'm going to say I can help you, one, because I actually can, and two, because I've been there and I've overcome it myself, and when I say I used to binge eat, and it's not a comparison game here at all, I'm not saying that, but um, from speaking to people and all my research and clients and things, um, people tend to be ashamed of when they say they binge, they eat like, yeah, but I really binge, like I eat a family-sized bar of chocolate in one go, and then they're ashamed by that. And if you feel ashamed, you feel ashamed. But I just want to make it clear to people that when I say I was a binge eater, I don't mean I just ate a family-sized bar of chocolate every night. I mean, we're talking, just an example, typical daily, not even joking, um, one kilogram bag of M&Ms, completely all to myself, um, four huge chocolate brownies that I used to make, and two tubs of Ben and, two tubs of ben and Jerry's, like a litre of Ben and Jerry's. All of that just in like a case of a few hours. So like I say, we're not comparing, but just so you know where I was coming from. And that was a regular occurrence. And I spent a fortune, like I had no money because I just used to spend it all on binge food. It's it's a lot, a lot, a lot of food. So, and people used to say to me, people that I trusted before I was ready to get help, they used to say, you know, it's never about the food. And I think they were idiots, if I'm being honest, because I was thinking, well, of course it's about the food because I just can't stop eating. It's not going to be about anything else. But it really is about something else. There's something deeper here. And whether you believe it or not, there is. There's something deeper and it's never about the food. And once you, unless you get to the reason why you binge, you'll never be able to move forward with that. So that's a really important thing to say. Um, and like I say, if you'd love, if you'd like help, I can help you. I'd love to help you. Just please send me a message, message me, whatever. I would love to help you. This is why I'm here speaking to you today. I want you to feel free, in control of your life and 
loving who you are, including your body, and it is possible. Trust me on that. It, I was, I don't want to talk about me, but read my story and then you can decide. Um, another thing that can help, okay, actual lol. I'm still going to leave this on here because it's real life, right? Real life that I've just dropped my phone. What else? Sorry, anyone on podcast doesn't know I'm faffing around right now. I'm turning it back round because I have a homemade, I have a homemade camera shelf, which is basically a pile of books, no lie, a pile of books on a table in front of natural light because I haven't got any fancy camera equipment. So that just happened. That's real life. As I was saying, yes, here we go. So another thing that can help you when you're in the middle of planning a binge or when you're just about to binge is if you go for a walk. And I know that is the last thing you want to think about. And I'm not saying do it all the time, but it's the last thing you want to think about when you're about to go for a binge, okay? But check this out, listen to this. Emotions are energy in motion and then motion changes emotion so in english that means um movement changes the way you feel so i did generally find that walking before i was going to binge significantly reduced the amount i did binge or sometimes not every time it stopped me from binging altogether because i just took a moment to stop and just think about what i was doing especially if I would walk with a podcast or an audio book, which is what I do all the time, it would just put me in a different frame of mind. So then I most often wouldn't binge or if I did, it would be half the amount that I would do anyway. So that that really can help. And plus exercise in general has been proven time and time again. It can protect against anxiety and depression, which again is one of the reasons why we binge in the first place. And another one is meditation. And this is not woo woo by the way mindfulness practices being aware of your surroundings if you're walking and you're not just on your phone or in your head actually looking around you and appreciating where you are and meditation that can really decrease binge and emotional eating like massively because you get present to the situation so you quiet your mind and you get centered like within yourself um you feel into your body you feel you kind of get signals and you kind of really tune into yourself and then when you become present to this, when you finish your meditation or your mindfulness practice, you go into the world like seeing things a little bit differently. So that that really can help as well. Also, another one, try yoga. Um, and I knew that I wanted to try yoga for a long time. I did it once like last year and was like, oh, well, it's not a hard enough workout. I'm just not doing it. But the fact that like, yoga, of people call it workout and it can be a workout but I don't do yoga now for a workout I do yoga because it connects me to who I am it stretches my body because of all the training I do do at the gym so that's like a massive one yoga is so good for you and it really it has been proven as well to reduce cortisol which is a stress hormone in the body which can then lead us to binge so anything to reduce stress and yoga does really help another thing which I learned from The Binge Code, which is a book that I recommend you read, is stick to a schedule. So people who eat three meals a day, um, have snacks, and are never really truly starving or really hungry, they binge less frequently. And this is because it keeps your blood sugar level and you're not getting the urgent need to physically eat something which will then trigger an emotional response to all I want this type of food or this type of food because when I eat this junk food it makes me feel amazing and I know it's the last thing you want to hear is to plan to eat quite a lot of food the next day or just generally daily when you've been binging because no doubt you've been used to restricting which is then why you binge anyway so if you're saying you're not gonna you're gonna restrict today you're gonna only have a little bit for lunch you're gonna have no breakfast or whatever then you're gonna end up most of the time eating way 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 over the amount that's healthy for you in a binge anyway because you've deprived yourself or whatever other reasons that you binge compared to whether you just ate normal stuff throughout the day whatever you fancied and didn't let yourself eat till you were over full just had normal amounts of food 
and you'll find that the urge to binge is definitely not as strong and I really struggle with this to begin with because I don't I have this um had this issue from when I was anorexic when I was 13 14 where I didn't I hated feeling full hated it which is counterproductive because obviously then I was a binge eater but when I was a binge eater, I wouldn't binge in a day. I would literally starve myself all day so I could feel that amazing, well, I thought it was amazing, that amazing feeling of being empty, complete, my body was completely empty. And then I would want it to feel that way so then I could then binge in the evening. And then, of course, you get over full till you can hardly breathe. But that's what habit I got myself into and that's what I used to do on a regular basis. So the last thing I wanted to do was eat regular meals because when I felt full in the day, it set like an emotional response off where I'd like panic a little bit. So I was like, oh my God, I'm like, this isn't normal for me to have food inside me in the day. And then it, and then it, it caused me to binge then as well in the day occasionally because I thought if I feel like I've got food in me, I may as well finish it off with a binge. So it if any of you can relate to that, I know how you feel because that's what used to happen to me. But eating regularly really, really, really does help. So, so just try that. And if you do want to learn more about binging, um, personal development, there's loads of books. You can listen to podcasts, not just me, which is nice that you listen to me, so thank you. But there's loads of other places you can get help as well um, if you do want to stop binge eating and you don't know where to how to even do that. But the bottom line is binging can sneak up on like anybody, whether it's just from time to time, watching Netflix on a Sunday or whatever. But if it's really affecting your everyday life, it's affecting your mental health and your physical health, then you do need to get help. You really, really do because you can't go it alone because everything that you've already done hasn't worked. So either get in touch with me, this is what I do, I'm an expert in this subject and I'm qualified and certified as well, or reach out to a psychologist or get therapy, do whatever you need to do to get help because when you have overcome this and you're in control without being diet in control, when you're just in control of your life and you just feel so free, it really does feel amazing and I really want that for you too. So reach out to me, I'm always here. Um, sorry about my phone falling off in the middle of this. Uh, no worries. Um, I love you all. As always, go, ha you can have, uh, start again, you can have, be and do anything you want, any, ever, you just got to go and get it, okay? So I love you all and I'll see you next time.